Welcome back. So I went in on uh, Saturday just for a little while to uh, do these layups on those little brackets on the uh, gear doors there, which, you know, the intention of that was to strengthen those brackets because they weren't uh, thick enough from the material that I'd used to create them initially. Uh, anyway, so I got that done. And now we're on to Monday, and I wanted to figure out this problem with uh, the coolant uh, overheating. So I've put a uh, valve here on the top of the radiator. Fortunately, we had a old inlet there and I've got my little vacuum thing on there and I managed to vacuum all the air out of the um, out of the whole system there. there was a lot in the radiator I think I put almost um, another gallon of coolant in there with all the air that came out and, and you can see now when I squeeze the hoses there it basically makes that move so um, you know I think all the air is out of there now so I shut that valve and I'm going to leave it there um, so I can bleed it anytime I want and uh, now I'm moving on to uh, fixing a problem I noticed um, on Friday after running the engine that uh, one of the intake things wasn't fitting very well so I'm cutting that tube and uh, Devon was working on uh, sanding the inside of the uh, inlet scoop there in the morning and uh, I also cleaned up these brackets here after all the layup was done I didn't actually get to show you but you get all this carbon fiber sort of hanging loose everywhere so I had to clean that up and also laid up uh, over those bits there that I forgot to do on a Saturday. So the brackets are looking good and they're super solid and strong now so um, hopefully this is all going to work out and you'll see more of that in a minute. And you can see there I actually put a little bit of resin in the top there where um, it was sort of like an opening um, from the sandwich because I did layers on both sides. Anyway and moving on to the doors so after they got all primed um, I wanted to put the handles back in so there they are sitting in a bag there so a little bit of a um, project to put them back in and then the inlet scoop by uh, Jeff finished sanding on that so the edges on that have a nice uh, shape to them now nice aerodynamic shape so the air should flow nicely in there and back on these gear doors I got the uh, torsion springs that I ordered so I've got this assembled and just trying out um, the whole mechanism now to see how it's all going to work out and those were the springs that I got and here's Devin uh, just countersinking there where the screws that, um, are on the lower cowling and getting all those ready so the cowling can go on with all the fasteners Okay, so I got the linkage fully assembled with the spring in there and everything sorted out the way I had designed it. Um, and unfortunately, what has happened, that you'll see here in a second, uh, you know, when you're setting up the geometry for this, you can have uh, one side of it, like when it's fully shut, you can have that at 90 degrees um, where it's pushing and then that way it'll hold it really well shut. But when it's in the open position, you can't have 90 degrees to your, your angle, um, you know, from one bracket to the other and subsequently you'll see what happens here when you hold the door in the position it would be on the aircraft like that this lower door doesn't have a lot of uh, lock sort of strength in it and at this point I'm basically giving up on this idea I think the way to do it uh, really is to just use in a, um, one of those linear actuators like we've used on the uh, cowling on the vent and also on the inlet just like a, um, a little a small one and have it open and close like that but at this point um, I'm just gonna stop right here and literally put the lower part of the door on the shelf and just go with the other bit of the door on the aircraft for now so kind of giving up on that thing uh, anyway moving on to something that I can do so this is that intake baffling sort of vein thing or whatever you want to call it that um, I bent up at Brits and now Brits gone and welded it up for me and so it's in, sitting in the place there nicely where it's going to live on top of the intercooler which is on top of the radiator and uh, with the cowling, uh, sorry, with the inlet uh, scoop on there, you can look in there and see how that's going to work. So that'll direct air nicely down through uh, the intercooler and the radiator. So now I just have to uh, make up some brackets to uh, mount that so it doesn't move around in there. And I'm just going to use some flat stock and just uh, bolt it down to uh, the intercooler on the existing bolts that are there. And Britt also welded up this pipe again for me. I had to cut it in two places and shorten it a little bit and change the angle on the top part of it there just to make it line up nicely with the intercooler and also, well, it's between two of the two intercoolers actually. So uh, now you can see it fits better. What was happening was um, the rubber um, sort of uh, tube that joins them together there with the clamps, 
it got kind of pinched in it wasn't fitting very well and I was worried you know with 40 pounds of boost in there that it was going to eventually pop off so it needed to be done right so I fixed that up and uh, got that done here you can see I've got it all in there feeling nice and snug and uh, got my um, got the uh, reservoir all mounted back up again um, nice and sort of horizontal there so the next thing to do is uh, create these little tab brackets here they're going to hold that thing in place and uh, moving on the guys are working on uh, getting the lower surface of the second wing there done and they're not far away from being able to put the last round of primer on there and you can see Jeff's got the wing fence on there at the end as well and he's just uh, sanding there around where that was bonded on and fared in so it looks looks like it was all one part of you know the whole thing as opposed to being like a separate part that was um, just added on so those are coming along and it won't be long and uh, they'll be painted and then um, we'll be able to um, mount the ailerons and rudders for those as well so I'm moving on to the nose gear doors and hopefully I'll have better luck with these compared with the main gear doors and you can see I've got one of those little torsion springs in there and that's doing a pretty good job right now even though it's just sort of roughed in there not mounted the way it should be but it's doing a pretty good job of holding that door open and I think even with the curvature of that door it'll uh, stay open with aerodynamic forces so there's the wheel that's going to actually pull the door shut with a cable attached to it um, that's going to be pushed up there when the um, nose gear uh, wheel comes up and looking from underneath again there you can see there's quite a bit of pressure holding that door um, but you can you know it doesn't take too much pressure to pull the door shut so I think this one's going to work out fine with this setup and uh, as I said just a cable um, going over that uh, arm there with the little wheel on it and uh, that will pull uh, these doors shut and the spring will just let them come back open again and so there with the nose gear up we've got the aircraft back on the blocks so I can put the gear up uh, so that's how that wheel ends up sitting and there'll be a stopper there so it doesn't drop all the way down it sort of hangs at like a 45 degree angle and the cables are run down there and pick that up so not a lot of exciting stuff going on but all these projects need to be done and uh, yeah it's kind of a bit of a boring video uh, for the first half of this week but hopefully I have something more exciting for you for a Saturday's video so anyway thanks for tuning in and um, we'll see you again on Saturday